Okay, so here's the final one of my series. All right, so what I have is y equals 1 half times x minus 3 squared plus 2. And what we're going to do to graph this is we're going to use vertex form. And when you apply in vertex form, it's important to understand what our, our components are. So a equals 1 half, h equals 3, and our k equals positive 2. So remember, when we have all these values, we need to understand what each one of them is going to do to our lovely parent graph, where in this parent graph, you can see that a equals 1, h equals 0, and k equals 0. So by applying now, when I'm going to transfer from a equals 1 to 1 half, it's still going to be positive. So my graph is still going to open upwards. But now, since I'm multiplying by 1 half, or my a, the absolute value of my a is less than 1, my graph is going to be stretched horizontally. Sometimes we call it fatter. Um, my h is a positive 3, because remember, it's x opposite of h. So that means x opposite of positive 3. And that's going to shift my graph three units to the right. And my k is positive 2, and that's going to shift my graph two units up. So if I was going to take this graph and shift it three units to the right and two units up, I'd be able to determine that my vertex is going to be those transformations, which is 3 comma 2. And also, a lot of times in vertex form, we just understand that it's h comma k which you can see I wrote right there. Then our axis of symmetry, which I'm really getting sick of writing this every single time. But our axis of symmetry is going to be x equals h, which in this case is 3. So x equals 3. And when we graph this, you'll be able to see that. So let's actually graph our axis of symmetry and our vertex. So our vertex is at 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, up 2. And then my axis of symmetry is at x equals 3. So that's going to be a nice little dotted line there. All right. So I haven't done any of these yet. And so maybe I guess I'll do it on this last one. Because I think a lot of students get up under, have a hard time understanding is I'm going to graph my parent graph, but it's not going to be the same. I have to be able to apply this transformation. And what I want you to understand is if here's y equals x squared, let's look at y equals 1 half x squared. So you can see the relationship. Because at y equals x squared, if I was going to do a table of values for this, we know that at 0, I get 0. And at negative 1, I get 1. And at negative 2, I get 4. All right, but let's look at what happens with my table of values if I'm multiplying them by 1 half. So if I do an xy table, and I'll do negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So now when I plug in 0, it's 0 squared. But now it's being multiplied by 1 half, which is still going to be 0. But now when I plug in negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1. And 1 times 1 half is 1 half. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times 1 half is 2. And then 1, these, by applying my axis of symmetry, I know that these are going to be the same values. So what I want you to understand is these points, if I go negative 1, I go up 1. Negative 2, I go up 4. But now, since I'm multiplying by 1 half, I'm going to go neg left 1, up 1 half, up over 2, up 2. So when I look at this graph, since I'm still opening upwards, instead of going over 1, up 1, I'm now going to go over 1, up 1 half. And that's going to be true in the positive direction as well, over 1, up 1 half. And then I'll go over 2, up 1. Over 2, up 1. And so when I graph this and now complete my behavior, you can see that the graph is going to be, well, I use a little bit different scale. But you can see that it's going to be a little bit wider or um, horizontally stretched compared to my original graph function. Um, so we know we have vertex axis symmetry. Let's go ahead and look at um, my y-intercept. This is actually going to be a fraction. We'll learn how to figure this out um, a little more detailed. So I'm going to have to do this algebraically. Um, so I'll just wait to kind of show you that in a different video as far as finding the y-intercept. You can see it's right here. Um, but I'm not getting very detailed with my graphs. So we know that that's the y-intercept, but I know it's going to be a fraction. So we'll just kind of hold off um, until I show you how to algebraically solve this. But you can see the x-intercepts. The graph is not going to cross the x-axis. And the vertex is already above the x-axis, and the m behavior is going up. So therefore, there's, no going to be x there's not going to be any real x-intercepts as well. Thanks.